is the ninth round game between Anwar NK with the white pieces and Pankaj Sharma with black at the Goa International Tournament in the B category. Anwar has a rating of 17.64 while Pankaj Sharma is the higher rated with 19.47. As you can see the position looks completely drawn, the two knights are stopping the rook and the pawn. But Anwar is thinking for a lot of time, his time is going down and now completely confused he picks the pawn on a5. He knows that he's made a blunder and that the position is lost. Pankaj Sharma keeps his cool, he has a good 1 minute 20 seconds in hand and calmly picks up the rook. Now in this position, two knights cannot really checkmate uh, the white king, but over here white has an additional pawn on e4 and the important point is not to pick up that pawn. If you do take that pawn, it would end in a stalemate. But Pankaj Sharma knew very well what is to be done. The pawn on e4 is not securely blockaded because the king stands in front of it. It means that whenever the king moves out from there, the pawn will advance. The question is whether a pawn on e5 is good enough to checkmate the white king. first step is being executed, the white king is being pushed back to the corner. King b7, Anwar moves towards the corner on a8 and Pankaj brings his king. Now the pawn will advance on e5 and that's what Anwar does. And the question is whether this pawn is far advanced or not. Now let me explain to you what's going on. In this position, black would like to checkmate the white king with his two knights. But when he plays the move knight to d4, king a7, knight c6, king a8, black realizes that in order to checkmate, he has to get his knight to b6. But the moment he moves his knight to d7, it's already a stalemate. And that's when you start to realize that two knights can never checkmate the lone white king. What you need is an additional resource. If white had the extra pawn, then things would be much different. Here we have a position which is similar to the game where white has, an pawn, has a pawn on e5. Now black can play knight to d4 and you realize that if white does the same thing that he did in the previous position then this is not a stalemate as white has an additional pawn move and it's a checkmate. Therefore after knight jumps to d4 white must push his pawn to e6 and after knight c6 e7 you realize that this is actually a race between the pawn queening and black being able to checkmate the white king. So something like knight d7, if you make a queen, then knight b6 is a checkmate, but white can go for a knight and you'd never know what's happening. So keeping these intricacies aside, you realize that when white has a pawn, it is highly possible that black can win with his knights. To help us make our task easier, the great composer Troitsky came up with the Troitsky's line. And this is exactly the Troitsky's line in front of you. What does it mean? It means that if the white pawn were to be blockaded on a5, b3, c4, d5, e5, f4, g3, h5, any of the white pawns are blockaded on this line or behind it, then black will win with his two knights. Here's a small task for you. Pause the video and think about this position and tell me whether black can actually win this game. 
I hope that you were able to think and you came to the conclusion that this position is not at all winning. It's a draw. The reason being the Trotsky's line went from A5, B3, C4, D5, E5, F4, G3, H5. The white pawn had to be on B3 or behind it, but it's currently on B4 and that's the reason why when black will somehow be able to corner the white king and then when he removes the other knight in order to checkmate, this pawn will already start running and that's why this position cannot be won in with best defense by white. An important point to note here is that after king g7, king e7, it is important that white runs towards this side of the board and not remain here on h8 or g8 because let's say you go to king h8, then after king f6, I have got you boxed in and for this knight to return to the game is much closer to the white king and here black wins. So you must play your king to g6 and try to run down the board where for the other knight to join in would take more moves and white pawn can start promoting. Just to make things absolutely clear in your mind, I will show you a game from my own praxis in which I was white and my opponent Diptamesh Reddy was black and this was played at the Hyderabad Open in 2013. What do you think? Can white win this position? If you say yes, then you are absolutely right because the Trotsky's line as we have seen is here for the black pawns and this pawn on b6 has been blocked perfectly on the line. So let's just check how the game went. King e6, king g4. The first part is to push the black king to the corner of the board and which one knight and the king can do very very well. After king h4, knight f3 check, he went king h3. But it is very instructive to see how to win after king h5. Now I play my king to f5, you have to go to h6 and it seems as if the king is going to run away. Not so easy, yeah. You play knight to e5. Black king now has two options. He can either come to h5 or he can go to g7. If he goes to g7 over here, then after king g5, king h7, I really like this uh, maneuver where I am controlling the f7 square but not from e5 but from d6 so that the king cannot run away. So what I would do is knight f7, king g7 and knight d6 so that the king doesn't run away from here and if he goes to the last rank I can bring my king in. After king f8, king f6, king g8 you can play the move knight to f5. Now this knight is perfectly stopping the black king from getting out anywhere. King f8, knight g7, king g8, knight e6, king h7, king g5 and finally you have boxed the black king in and the next task is simply to get your other knight in and this pawn is going to take a lot of time to queen and you can just checkmate the black king. Here instead of king g7 if black went king h5 now comes the instructive maneuver knight g6 stopping king h4 and here knight to f4 you have stopped the king from coming to h5 and after king g7, king e6, king h7, king f7, king h6, king f6 and now is the time to change the knight's path after knight e6, king h6, knight g7, the same maneuver again, all over again and you push the black king to the last rank. Now we remember that after knight f3 check we were looking at king h5 
but in the game he went king h3 and after a few moves I was not so well versed with the entire technique so I might have made some inaccurate moves but I managed to checkmate him after he went to king g1 knight to d3 king h2 which was a mistake clearly he should have played king to f1 and now I can already uh, free my knight by playing knight to d4 b5 knight to b3 b4 knight d2 king g1 king g3 b3 knight to f4 b2 knight e2 check and just when it seems like black has made a queen i'm able to checkmate his king in the game it was much easier he went king h2 i went knight f4 king g1 king e2 and i have boxed him in and i can bring my knight back and that was the end because after b4, knight e2, b3, knight g3, that's a pretty checkmate. Coming back to the game, you realize that if we drew the Trotsky's line here, the pawn on e5 is on the line, which means that Pankaj Sharma, the player with the black pieces, is winning the game. Now Anwar plays his king to a7 and the next phase of the game very clearly revolves around what we have just discussed to push the white king towards the corner of the board. Anwar is thinking for his move. He is trying to decide whether he wants to put his king to a6 or a8 and he goes to a6 which is the correct decision. Pankaj Sharma is trying to also decide how he can win this game because it's not so simple for first time if you are playing this. He gives a check to gain some time. Of course, you never want the pawn to promote, I mean to start moving ahead. brings his knight back. Perhaps he just wanted to gain some time but he was also thinking whether he could checkmate the white king at that point but it was not possible to do so. Anwar repeats, he brings his king to a6. Here king to c5, king goes to a7. King b5. black player really wants to make a few moves quickly so that at the end of it he can have more time to decide. Of course this is not so simple and as you can see the players are just moving up around. But there was a small triangulation because here usually it was black to play and now white moves his king. Knight goes to b2 and now king to a8 this is where i was a little bit confused why not king to a6 after king to a6 the way to win it was shown earlier you go knight c4 king a7 knight to a5 king a6 knight b7 this is a critical move and now knight to c5 stopping the king from coming to a6 and after king b8 to play king d7, pushing the king to the corner of the board and then winning the game. Anwar plays his king to a8 and now things are much easier for Pankaj.
He put plays his king to b6. And now the king is clearly boxed in. So there is no worries, king b8. Now when the king comes to c8, you only have to make sure that it does not run away from d7 because the other knight already controls the d8 square and so bringing the knight to c5 is a logical try. Pankaj plays king to c7 which was not required but completely fine after king a7 knight moves to c5 and here we have a very very simple position which is completely winning but there are some technical problems that you have to face here the king goes to a8 and Pankaj takes a lot of time for his move king to c8 he is unable to find a win he has to bring his other knight into the game but that would let the white pawn advance and he has not been able to calculate everything until the mate so he plays knight to b3 but of course you don't want the king to escape from a6 What is the way out from this? Anwar is looking at this position trying to see if some draw like threefold repetition or 50 move rule has come into effect. <laughs> and he plays his other knight to c5. This would mean that the pawn can advance but this had to be done at some point e6 the pawn moves ahead this is quite thrilling he gets his knight to b4 e7 will the pawn queen first or will there be a checkmate? This is the interesting thing. Pushes his pawn to e7. Now Pankaj has two options to check from b5 or to check from c6. He gives a check from c6. King moves to a8. Now, if white can play knight to d7 and knight b6 check, that's checkmate. But there is a small twist there. If you play knight to d7, white can make a knight and give a check. What is the evaluation of that position? Not at all easy to know. Especially when you have 30 seconds on clock. This is the penultimate round on the fifth board. And quite a good amount of prize money is at stake. Anyway, he played his knight to d7. He knows that he has to do it at some point. And now Anwar thinks about his move. He doesn't have much. He puts a knight under promotes. Both the players are playing an extremely interesting game. It's not often that you get to play such chess with three knights at the end and still it being so interesting king c8 and somehow this does not seem as if black will be able to win the game he takes his time here he must ensure that knight b6 mate does not happen on the board.
knight d6. If now the king moves to d8, white king can come out to b7. So you have to keep your king inside the box. You have to play king to c7. Pankaj does play king to c7. The knight goes to b5 check. If black can get his king to a6 and then knight b6, once again it would be a checkmate. So white has to be careful here. He must not allow this thing to happen. Knight a7, it's a very nice trick. With this move, Anwar forces black to either move his knight back or to take the knight on a7, which would end in a stalemate. You can see from the expressions of the player how confident Anwar has become and how thoughtful Pankaj is. He knows that he has botched up the win. D4. Now the easiest thing would be to do is sacrifice the knight, white knight somehow and get the king out from there. The knight has moved to c8 with a check. Pankaj plays king to a6. Black knight on d7 is stopping the white king from coming out. So Anwar's next move is very interesting. He's thinking about sacrificing his knight on b6 because if knight takes b6, the king can suddenly start moving out and then the two knights can never checkmate the white king. And if the black king takes on b6, then it's already a stalemate. Oh, 
and there you have it. It's just taking a close look and he makes the move. Pankaj picks the knight and he accepts the draw. And now the final conversation is very interesting. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was winning actually in the Mickey game. Okay, did it that I sacrificed my rope. Okay, wait. There is no meaning in explaining that. I just did it for fun. But in the opening afternoon in the Mickey game, it was really good. I could not have played here. Okay. Is that a good one? Yes, it's a good one. ये आ गया ना मुंह क्या देगा वो ये मेट है कैसे मेट है अरे भाई ये पॉन रख बंदे नहीं ना बोली क्या ना बन गई ना ये नाइट आप यहाँ आए थे ना यहाँ यहाँ गलत ये आए यहाँ अब ये बना के चेक दी अब मुंह देनी है उसको अब क्या ये नाइट बनाया ना इसने अब उसको उसको मुंह नाइट की देनी पड़ेगी ये चेक मेट कैसे रुक रहा है ये कहीं भी जाता है तो ये चेक में अब चेक नहीं है ना आपको कोई भी ये नाइट गलत था ना आपने जो चला ये नाइट यहाँ जाने की वजह यहाँ जाने की वजह ये नाइट यहाँ ये चेक तो ये रानी ना बन जाती है क्या बातें करी यार अरे पागल नहीं हाँ रानी बन जाती है अच्छा रानी उल्टी हार जाती है अच्छा रुक जाना ये रानी आगे एक सेकंड एक सेकंड रानी आगे अब चेक है क्या ओए यार मैंने फोन ही पुश करवा दिया जाए फोन पे था ना वो मेड था तो ये सारे जाने से छा� the final discussion between the players and the friends and spectators was very interesting. Let's just rewind and go back to the critical position after any c5, e6, knight d4, e7. This was the crucial juncture at which black went wrong. Pankaj gave the check knight c6 and after king a8, he played the move knight d7. Well, here white made a knight check because of course a queen would lose uh, to knight b6 mate over here. But he made a knight check and after king c8, knight d6, king c7, this was very nicely defended by Anwar and knight b6 was the final move that gave him the draw. One of the friends uh, who was watching the game or one of the spectators, he said that here instead of knight d7, you could have played knight to a6. The point being, if white promotes to a knight, you can play king b6 and now the king is stalemated, so the knight has to move and then it's knight c7 checkmate. Of course, an excellent concept, but with a clear flaw that after knight to a6, white doesn't have to make a knight, he can just make a queen. So, in this position after e7, knight c6 check was the crucial mistake. Knight to b5 would have won because after king a8, knight d7, knight which is forced, otherwise knight b6 is a checkmate. You go king b6 and you get the same position that we were just talking about, but now knight to c7 is 
the winning move over here because the white knight has to move and Pankaj could have won the game. What an instructive endgame.